all have talked about hydroelectric power, right, to the dam. And then you've talked about fossil power, right? Okay. So that leaves nuclear power, okay? And who all uses electricity? Raise your hand. Everybody uses electricity, okay? Jack, raise your hand. Even Jack with the camera uses electricity. So this is a model of Sequoia Nuclear Facility. And I know that you guys probably all know where this is. If you've ever gone along the edge of the mountain up here, you've seen this facility. There are two very big things that are missing from this. Do you know what they are? No. Those big towers that have the steam coming out of the top. So we're gonna use, we're gonna have to imagine those a little bit later, okay? Because they are very important to running our nuclear plants. So I've got my laser pen, and if you guys will look at the sheets that that the activity books that we handed out to you guys at the beginning. If you'll turn to the front page, you will notice right here in the bottom right hand corner the type of reactor that we're going to be talking about. It is called a pressurized water reactor, okay? So you can look at that as we're describing what goes on in a nuclear power plant, okay? So see these two buildings right here in the middle? Yeah. This is where all the action takes place. These are called reactor buildings. And these are about five stories tall of seven foot thick reinforced steel concrete. Now my core or my nuclear reactor is located at the very bottom of these buildings underground in very deep ionized water. So it's very clear. And a nuclear reactor pool is actually not that big. Do you guys know how big a kiddie pool is? Yeah. Well, you know mm -hmm. how big a big kiddie pool is, like at the yeah. public pool? That's about how big a round a nuclear reactor is. So not very big, is it? But a lot of activity goes on in that very small space, and that's what we're going to talk about. So down here at the bottom is my nuclear reactor, and it is full of a very special kind of fuel called uranium. Now uranium is a naturally occurring element. So have you guys studied any of the periodic table of elements at all yet? Yeah. A few? Well uranium is one that's on that chart. And we mine uranium throughout the world and we compress it into little pellets. Who in here uses a number two pencil? Everybody. Does everybody have an eraser on the, on the top of it? That eraser is about the size of one uranium pellet. And what we do is we stack them on top of each other into very long metal rods, about as tall as me, and we group them all together and we put them inside the nuclear reactor. Now uranium is completely harmless when it, before you start your nuclear reaction. So you could actually hold it in your hand and very little would happen to you. You could sit on the fuel assemblies that we put in here before we start our reaction. But once we start our reaction, something very different takes place. So what happens when you guys take your hands and rub them together Friction. very fast? Friction. Friction. What happens to it? It gets very hot. hot. What you're actually doing is heating up the atoms on your hands. And what's surrounding an atom? Electrons? That's what's going around really fast. So what happens to electrons when you get them really excited and they go very fast? They give off a lot of Heat, okay? So what happens if you take your, the same hands and you smack them together like this? Does it get hot for just a second? Yeah. Right when yeah. you smack it together? Okay? That is because for just one split second, you've heated up those electrons again and got them really hot. That is what we do in a nuclear reaction. We take a uranium atom and another uranium atom and we smack them together really fast except instead of just one or two, we're doing millions at the same time. So if we're doing millions of this at the same time, what are we producing a lot of? Heat. heat. Okay. We need to use that heat because we need to heat something up and make it very hot. What happens when you heat water up and make it very hot? It turns it into, it steam. into steam. That's right. So inside this reaction, we have very special clear, very purified water, cleaner than what you can buy at the BP station in a bottle. And it's going through a very special set of tubes in the reactor building and going through a steam generator that is turning it into steam from all of the heat 
from all of our uranium atoms smacking together. Now we take that steam and we compress it. What happens if you take a Coke and you shake it up and open the lid? It fizzles. That's right, because it's under a lot of pressure. pressure. So we do the same thing with steam. We take all that steam we've just made and we squeeze it into a tube. So it's a lot of steam under a lot of pressure. And just like when you open a coat and it sprays out really fast, that's what happens to our steam when we make it move right over here. See this building? This is our turbine building. And we have two very large turbines in this building, bigger than the hallway behind you. What happens if you have a pinwheel and you do this? It makes it spin. It makes it spin. What happens if you take a pinwheel and you blow on it really hard like this? It spins really fast. So that's what's happening with our turbine. We are spraying the steam that we've made on it and it spins really, really fast. It is connected to a huge magnet, bigger than any magnet you've ever seen. And that magnet starts to do this as the turbine spins. Swish, 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 back and forth like this. Who in here has a Game Boy? Or any kind of game system, okay, with a plug-in? When you get home, I want you to look at the plug-in and you will notice, if it's not on the plug, it'll be on your Game Boy or your, or your game system. It says A slash and that stands for alternating current. And what alternating current means is that it is a magnet going one way and alternating the other way. Swish, swish, alternating current, AC. Okay? So, we've got our magnet going swish, swish, swish. Guess what happens when a magnet starts doing this really, really fast? Guess what it makes? Electricity. Okay? So, we've got in our reactor, in our, excuse me, turbine building, a magnet spinning very, very fast, okay? So we're taking the electricity from our magnet and we're piping it through the roof. And if you had a bunch of wires that you could hook up to these little nodules and run them out to this transformer yard right over here, you would see a lot, a lot of wires coming out. And see the transformer yard over here, all these Ys? Those are actually transformers that take the electricity that we just made and amp them up or make them even stronger so that we can send out the most electricity to your house. Because the further electricity goes, the weaker it gets. So we've got to have it coming out of our nuclear facility really, really, really strong so that by the time it gets to your house, it is that the right frequency for you to operate everything in your house that requires electricity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of these transformers, including the ones that are on a pole by your house, are full of mineral oil. And that's how we keep it from getting too hot on those wooden poles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we have a problem though. We still have a lot of steam that we need to transform back into water so that we can use it again in our nuclear reaction. So how do you get steam back to water? Yeah. You cool it down. Mm -hmm. To cool it down at a nuclear facility, we take a reservoir right here of river water and we channel it through a big pipe into our turbine building. And the pipes that have the steam run through the pipes that have the river water and the river water is so much colder, it is used to cool down and condense the steam back into water to run cycle back through my nuclear reactor. But we have another problem. What happens with the river water? If it's using itself to cool off the steam, it gets really hot too, right? Yeah. Yeah. What lives in the lakes and rivers? Fish. And what else? Frogs, Frog, turtles, turtles, plants. plants. If you put very hot water back into the river and the lakes, what will happen? They will die. 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 Do we want all of those plants and animals to live or die? Live. live. So we don't want to make electricity at the cost of our environment. So we have a solution. And this goes back to those big towers we were talking about earlier, hyperbolic cooling towers. So I have a big pipe that runs out of my transmission area right here, and it runs across over to those huge towers that are shaped like this, made out of concrete. And if you guys were really, really tall, and you could look inside the reactor, or, or rather inside the cooling tower, 
you would see a gigantic pipe coming up the middle like this. And at the very top of the cooling tower, it would be spraying out the water from the river that had gotten too hot. So as it comes out of the pipe, it hits the sides of the cooling tower and it falls like rain. And by the time it gets to the bottom, it's cool enough for us to release back into the reservoir or the river or lake. And so when you guys see Sequoia with all of that steam coming out of those towers, that's not smoke, it's an actual cloud coming out where we've cooled off the river that we have used to cool off our steam pipes that we're using to spin the turbines in the, re in the um, turbine building. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right now, Sequoia is what we call offline. Every year we have to go in and put new uranium fuel rods in the reactor building so that to, we, to keep our reaction going. So right now, Sequoia has been turned off and we are putting new fuel rods in it. And in about a week or so, we will start it up again and you'll start noticing the steam coming out of the cooling towers. Does that explain nuclear power? Yeah. Yes. yes. Good. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Does it produce like any radiation? It produces a lot of radiation. In fact, when uranium starts to deplete, it gives off a lot of radioactive energy and gas. That is why we are regulated in this country to have them in these very large containment domes so that if there were any radioactive gases or core material, uranium fuel, to leak out, all of that gas could be contained in these two domes without leaking out into the environment. <laughs> The way that our react, first of all, a, we've never had anything like that happen in the United States. Secondly, reactors are built to control that from happening. So the only way that would ever happen is if um, there was some serious manual override of the system. Even if a nuclear power plant had a core meltdown, they don't really blow up, they just get really, really hot and give off a lot of gas. These containment domes would contain any of the escaping material. In other words, it's not going to blow the roof off of these domes. Does that make sense? So like what happened in Russia would never happen here. So like what happened in Russia? Yeah, uh, so in Russia, they did not have, first of all, their reactor was ba a bad design, but in Russia, in Chernobyl, they did not con put their reactors in any sort of containment facility other than a building like this. So when they had a problem and they did a test that they were unauthorized to do and that was against the law, it blew off the roof of their building and all of the gases escaped into the air because they were not contained in buildings like this. Make sense? Yes, sir. I was going to say, with the scene how y'all are cooling it, what if y'all got, like, how the big pipe was coming out of the building? What if you just got um, two pipes and ran them up to where they'd attach that pipe and have the steam is going in those two pipes? And then run the cool water up through that middle pipe. Because we have to save the water that we use. This is very special water that we use to create the steam to spin the turbine. It's very purified water. It costs about $10 a gallon. And so we have to reuse that again and again. So that's not the steam that we want releasing back out into the atmosphere. But wouldn't some of the steam um, like disappear? Some of it disappears, uh, and so we're constantly replenishing it, but very little uh, escapes in the form of steam in the water that's used for the actual reaction itself. Yes, sir? What would happen if there was actually a nuclear problem and it was leaking into the towers? How would you fix it? Uh, well, it wouldn't leak into the towers because the towers only have water in them. Um, but very little, very little types of accidents are going to occur within the core um, that we couldn't maintain. These domes are specifically engineered to spray down any gases that would leak out and then contain them within the unit. Um, once those gases would be contained, then we could go in and close up the reactor. Okay, yes, ma'am. What if the gases like contained, like what would happen? Um, we've never had a radioactive gas leak in the United States in 50 years. Um, any radioactive gases that get out could be potentially dangerous to humans and animals, uh, which is why we have very safe reactors. We have the safest uh, nuclear um, fleet in the United States, and we have never had a radioactive leak into the environment in 50 years. 50, well, yes, sir. What did I do? 
Well, nuclear power's only been around for about 50 years. Oh. <laughs> it's not that old. It's not as old as some of the other types of power, like hydro. Anybody else? Well, guys, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. No, take them with you. Those are for you to keep. Okay? Thank you for taping. Just press the button in the middle.